You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 295 for Sunday the 12th of January 2020. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to the Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my very, very good friend Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there, Jane. Hello there, Michelle. And how are you, my darling? It feels like ages since we spoke. It probably was ages since we've (laughs) spoken, my darling. But yes, hello, sweetie. How was your Christmas? Very chilled. Oh, perfect. Very very relaxed, very kick back, do nothing. Enjoy the time with uh, Simon and the kids. Yeah, really chilled out. And finished off with a lovely little weekend away. So yeah, very, very nice. And you didn't break any bones ice skating. (laughs) No, I'm, I'm more sensible. So you see... I know my limitations. I know that if I got put a pair of ice skates on, the minute I move, I will be on my backside and it will not, A, end well. It would not look look good. It would be very unglamorous. I will be your typical Bambi on the ice. I have no intention of skating. However, Simon loves to skate. It's so therefore, as a consequence, because I don't like it, he doesn't get to go very often, bless him. Aww. So... Um, he had a wonderful time skating with my daughter and her boyfriend. And actually, Molly's doing really well now. She's she's skating quite good. So I just stood at the side and watched them enjoy themselves and um, had a lovely time, actually. Yeah, it was very nice just watching them all. A, a bit scary at times because there were some that were going a bit fast. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I'm like looking through my fingers at some points. But no, they survived. They all came back with all fingers and all toes. So we're doing all right. Yay! <laughs> and did Santa bring you any Disney? Did Santa bring me any Disney? A little bit, not not vast amounts, I have to say. I got um, a couple of T-shirts and and some DVDs or Blu-rays, I should say. Um, that was about it this year. But you, your Christmas was very San- It was very Disney, though, wasn't it? I think there was a tad of Disney thrown just, in. Yeah, just a little a bit, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk some news and we'll we'll come okay. on to my uh, Disney bit. And I gather mm. we're going to kick off with some spirit jersey info. Well, we've got another one out, guys. I don't think we go by a week, do we, without another spirit <laughs> jersey coming out? It feels like it, anyway. Um, so this one is um, the Luxo Ball spirit jersey. So it came out at Disney World and now it's out at Disneyland as well. I have to admit, I'm not one for the spirit jersey. I know, I know you've got a couple, haven't you, Shell? Yeah, a couple. We'll stick couple. at a couple. Stick at a couple. And I'm, I've never been. I'm like, yeah, okay, they're a bit expensive, but I've never really been particularly drawn to them. I have just seen them as like, oh, here we go again, another fad, another colour come out, blah blah. I do actually quite like the look so ball one. Because it's got a pattern on it. I think that's probably what swayed me. So rather than just being a plain jersey with something on the back, hmm. this is this is like underneath like the bust area, I suppose, and down the arms. It's got the little look so ball, which I thought was quite sweet. So I do quite like this one. Hmm. But And obviously there was a lot of look so Pixar-y merch coming out. I saw some beautiful little earrings, actually, as well. The little look so, look so ball earrings. Um, so there's obviously a lot of that merch coming out Anyway, and it's jumping on that one. But I suppose it's a bit like we had the insert name of colour, mm. didn't we, with the with the ears and bags and jerseys. So it's obviously going down that route. Yeah. But are we going to get to, like, critical mass point when it comes to spirit jerseys? Probably. I was talking to um, my friend Wendy about spirit jerseys and I'm sure her daughter Jackie told me she's 17 of them I think she's got virtually really? everyone that's been made wowzers I know. well you know you can't blame them if it's if it's if they're selling and stuff I mean you can even get the baby Yoda ones can't you and stuff oh which, my word it does look a bit weird that doesn't it I love baby Yoda but oh yeah hmm I took pictures the day it came out and I was like stunned because one that shade of pistachio green just yeah. isn't 
a nice colour on me personally. But the picture of the Yoda baby thing on the front, because obviously I've not seen the Mandalorian because my other half will not do anything until it comes out legally in March. Mm. So he's not watched it yet. So we don't know about baby Yoda or the kid or the child or whatever name you're giving him. <laughs> and I just saw this jumper and I thought it was the most hideous thing I've ever seen in my life. I will have to agree with you. First, the face on it is a bit peculiar, but I'm a, I'm a bit like you. That colour is what I would call like a grub magnet. It's just going to look grubby really quickly. Mm. You know what I mean? But yeah, I suppose this is the point. I'm also going to say, dearly beloved, I've got a confession to make. Oh, here we go. My name is Michelle, and on my holiday, I bought three spirit jerseys. Oh my goodness. I know. Well, technically, I didn't purchase three on the holiday because technically, the lovely Marla Chan, when she was in Las Vegas the other week, I said to her, did you know that spirit jerseys were on half price at the Disney outlet in Las Vegas? And bless her, she literally, by the time I'd pressed send on the message, jumped in a taxi, gone all the way over to the outlet place went and got herself one and she said would I like one picking up and I said oh I'd love you forever so she got me the lovely haunted mansion one. Oh, nice yeah so, technically I didn't buy it on that trip I gave her the money before the trip so all right yeah loose go on and then when what? I was going around company d which is the Disney cast member shop yeah I kind of got given Jackie immediately went straight for the spirit jerseys and anything she knew that I'd like she went as a beeline to them brought them over to me and one of them was the Arendelle Aqua spirit jersey right and I had said on on the show earlier that it was a horrible color but mm. when I looked it upright and close it 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 had like a glitter effect to it and I was I was bowled over by the glitter so I got that and I got it for half price. Okay. And and then and then um yeah, the world of Disney have introduced two. There's a pair, a Mickey and a Minnie. And mm. they're in sort of like your nineties bright bold colour. So there's okay. a bright fuchsia and a coral. And on the front there's a Mickey or a Minnie. And on the back I think it says Disneyland. Mm. And I just loved the bright retro colouring of it. So I thought, yeah, I've got to have that one as well. So so how many do you own now then, Michelle? I've got Black Disneyland, I've got Snow White, I've got the Christmas one, the mm -hmm. three from this trip, and I'm sure I've got a Walt Disney World one and I can't remember what it is. So that's seven. Oh, God, it sounds really bad when I say that. Maybe we need to do a special <laughs> Facebook group, Spirit Jersey Anonymous. <laughs> well, you know how many I've got? Zero. Zero. But you might get the Pixar one. Well, I might be more tempted by that one. Yeah. It's a it's the first one I've genuinely seen and thought, oh, I quite like that. But to you be know fair. What your problem's gonna be? What? The small in the adults. Yeah, massive still. Is too big for you. Because yeah. I get the small in the adults and it's just about right for me. I've oh I forgot I've got another one. I've got the um rainbow <laughs> unicorn one, but I got that in a kid's size. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you might have to do what I do and get the extra large in the kids. The kids, yeah, possibly. And they're cheaper. True. I think it's just that I mean I quite I don't know, I mean I like T shirts and, and baggy jumpers and things, but I suppose my style is maybe more of a fitted style. I think I look at that and, and think it looks they look a bit shabby to me. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. I'm probably hacking off a lot of people who love these things, but they just look a bit like what I would call slobby. You know, like if I'm chilling out on an evening and put me like my joggers on and a an old mm. jumper. That's what they look like to me. Sorry. Well, I don't wear them extra large and big and baggy. I like to have them fairly fitted. I must admit the Christmas one is probably the biggest one I've got. And it did start to feel a bit weird on me because I do like it a bit more huggy in. But mm. anyway, that's enough spirit jersey <laughs> chatter. Nothing, okay. Whatever. Have you anything else in the way of news? Because it was a bit of a dull week, really, wasn't it? It was. I mean, then a cute little thing that I've just seen is that there's now an R two D two that's going round uh, Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland, which I know you will have missed. I think it's only just started going round yeah. this week. But but that's I'm I'm pleased to see that happening because obviously when Galaxy's Edge was first announced, 
they came across it's going to be this really immersive um, place and interaction and droids and characters and it it didn't maybe quite live up to the hype so I'm kind of glad now that they're starting to get that aspect of it going a bit more and because I'm quite aware of the R2D2 Builders Club so Mm. I know that there's people all over the world in their own homes are making these remote control R2D2s I've been next to them you know and they suddenly appear next to you and they're bleeping and blopping and turning and stuff you know so it's like if people at home can do this stuff it can't be that hard then for Disney to do it do you know what I mean so Mm. I'm kind of kind of cool that it's now happening in the parks although a little bit of news mm. <laughs> from my own from so simon you know i said simon's making his own r2d2 yeah well over the christmas period he's now been messing about with arduinos technical term here for people and electrical so- sockets and circuits and things mm. and little mp3 players so it will make its own little noises oh God, he didn't speak to Tom, did he? Because that's no, what Tom loves to play with. No, but he might be. Um, and I think I think the top is going to spin round. But even better, and it's shh. I'm, I might, you know, you know, when I go out and do my cosplaying, hmm. and I and I and I cosplay as Governor Price from Star Wars Rebels, hmm. I might be getting my own little droid to play with. Oh, good God! Yeah, little mouse droid. It's very exciting. Sorry, I'm getting geekier as I get older, aren't I? I do apologise. You are, you are. But don't <laughs> ever apologise for being you and loving what you like to do, my love. Because I tell you what, that's why people listen in to us, because they love the fact that we have these different passions about different things about Disney. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm not quite sure where mine's come from. I think it's by de facto, because Simon does it all. It's like, oh, yeah, whatever, I'll go along with it. Oh, bless, bless. Well, I've got no other bits of news I want to talk about, but there was something that caught of sort of caught my attention when I was listening to the Disney Dish with Len Tester and Jim Hill the other day, hmm. and they were talking about self serve kiosks. Right, and okay. it it sort of made me think. Well, what do you think about going into a Disney park and getting your merchandise? and purchasing it in a way where you don't interact with a cast member, would you be up for a self-serve type experience? Oh, um, well, as somebody that does that quite a bit when I'm grocery shopping, Hmm. and I quite like that aspect, then I probably, I wouldn't be adverse to it, shall we say. Hmm. But I think grocery shopping is one thing because... That's very much, I'm going in, I know what I want. I want to get out to get back in my car to get home for a coffee. Mm. You know what I mean? There's a there's a purpose to it. Whereas somewhere like a Disneyland, Disney World, where it's those cast interactions that kind of make your moments, mm. I think I might be probably, if, if, if I was got the options... Unless the queue was horrendous for the cast member service, I'd probably still go to the cast member, I think. Mm. I'm in total agreement. I, Although in this country, I don't tend to go to the self-serve kiosk because nine times out of ten when I have, something doesn't scan right or the computer mm. talks to me in a way that it annoys me. <laughs> but I don't always like your general checkout person who has to make the small chat and it's like oh you're having a good day it's like i don't really want to speak to you i want to pack my shopping Mm. when i'm at disney it's the cast member interaction that sometimes are the highlights of the day yeah i mean i suppose if you're going at an extremely busy time if you're and you know it's the end of the night or something and you just want to pay and go then i suppose Mm. it's nice to have that that option but I must admit, I'm a bit like you, Shell, in that aspect of I go to certain stores in this country. I I use them regular, so I know how their systems now work. Mm. So I'm pretty au fait with it. But it's sometimes you go into a shop you've not been into before, and it's like, oh, for goodness sake, I could have been, I could have been out by now. This mm. self service is taking longer because the the barcode isn't reading properly. I've now got to wait for somebody to come over to me to sort it out. When actually I'm just watching the queue down at the till over there and somebody else has been and gone by the time it's take me to do it. So it doesn't always work out as being the faster option because they've still got to man them 
to a certain level anyway. But as you say, I, I think it's a different different scenario when you're out and about doing shopping, day to day shopping, those necessities to in a resort location. I think that's something entirely different. And I would prefer to have a chat and stuff. Let me give you an example of something that happened on the holiday. OK. So one particular day I went into the little shop inside the Disneyland Hotel. Yeah. And I bought a Disneyland Hotel Christmas ornament. Nice. And I was talking to the lady behind the till, lovely lady called Christine. Hi, Christine. And I was chatting to her and I was saying, oh, can you please make sure you wrap it up really well? And we were chatting for about five, ten minutes. And it was lovely because yeah. I wasn't in a rush and it was nice. And I was asking her where the Disneyland gingerbread castle had gone because they didn't do one in the Disneyland hotel like they always did. And I was a bit annoyed. And I chatted. Mm. And I was saying, oh, I want something from the Grand California. Do you know if you do a similar ob- item over there and she was saying oh they do this big tile so the next day I goes over to the Disneyland hotel and I goes and chooses the tile I wanted mm. and goes to the check it was Christine again but it was <laughs> in the Grand Californian this time so again I had a little chat with her and that interaction made that made my day because she was really kind and she made sure it was packed properly and you don't get that if you've got the bypass and yeah this then brings me in a bit of a awkward position because I've been raving on all holiday on Instagram about how wonderful mobile ordering is because Disney are really pushing it because if you use mobile ordering at some of the locations, they give you a special little button to say that you've yeah. done it. And like going over to get the yellow snow from the Adominable Treats, I mobile ordered because there was a queue of about 10 people. But I think mobile ordering food is one thing as opposed to just self-service checkout on everything. Because hmm. mobile ordering food, if that means that because you've done it, those that haven't get quicker service as well. So, so the waiting time for everybody is cut down, then that's got to be a good thing. And at the end of the day, mobile ordering food is fast food service and therefore you kind of wanted to get in and out, aren't you? Yeah. You know. Well, like the beignets. Yeah, the mint julep bar. There was a queue of about 20 people. Mm. I literally thought, oh, I'm not waiting in that. Went straight on the app, ordered it, picked it up within the space of 10 minutes. Yeah, and, you know, at the end of the day, any cast members that you're going to come across in a fast food service capacity haven't got the time to be chit-chatting because they're aware that they've got a queue behind person or whatever it may well be all right if you're picking up your food you have they haven't they're not going to interact with you it's like is this yours yes out you go again isn't it Mm. whereas in a shop obviously the cast members have still got to be mindful of that because what you don't want to be doing is spending 15 minutes chatting with person a while there's a queue behind them they've got to as um, skilled cast members know when to spend the time chatting and how long to spend the time chatting um, but I think it is that personal touch in those shopping experiences, like you say, at the hotels or wherever it may well be, you know, especially for us coming from abroad, where we may not be au fait with, you know, counter systems, etc. Um, or we might have special requests like you did wanting something wrapped particularly because, you know, it's going to have to go back on a plane and things like that. And I do think from for our point of view, you know, I know from my experience, when you open your mouth and British accent comes out, we do get a little bit more banter with mm. cast members because they, you know, and it's an inroad, isn't it? I mean, you know, I've worked in customer service before and you know, we're only chatting with, with my daughter who's now working in the retail environment. You want to make the customer's experience as pleasant as possible so you pick up on things. So it's it's a very easy in for a cast member to hear a foreign accent and go, oh, is that an English accent? Whereabouts are you from? You know, crikey. I remember going back years and years ago, every time I mentioned that I was from Nottingham, it's like, oh, Robin Hood, you know. <laughs> and everybody thought I knew Kevin Costner because that was when the Robin Hood movie was out. But, you know, so I think there is a time and a place for it. And I think food's one thing. Other experiences, you know, other retail options is, is different again. So you mentioned that I was sort of overwhelmed with Disney at Christmas. Mm. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be going through some of things that I really want to delve into a little bit more detail on. 
but I'm going to give everybody a little bit of a quick overview of the trip and maybe if people want to sort of communicate with us and ask for more details on something they can do so yeah okay so basically I arrived on Christmas Eve and got taken to the Anaheim Marriott and we booked this via Priceline so really really excited I got a really good deal on it and mm. checked in guy called Justin checked me in and he was sort of saying, how are you doing? And I said, oh, you know, I'm fine. And I told him I was from England and I'd had a bit of a long journey and Christmas was a bit weird because it's the first Christmas without my dad and it had been his birthday a couple of days before. And we were chatting for ages, really nice guy. And I said, oh, my friend's just parking the car and um, we're going to go up to the room. So I, I got the key, or when I say key, the plastic credit <laughs> card, and yeah. went to one side and waited for her. And then he came over to me about 10 minutes later and he said, um, I'd like to do something because you said that, you know, you, you've you been through a bit of an experience recently. And I said, yeah. He says, well, um, do you drink alcohol? And I thought, I'm going to make it's a bit weird. He's asking me if I drink alcohol. <laughs> I said, yes. Uh, Are you well, pulled? <laughs> I, have, I have a tendency every now and again to enjoy a good glass of wine. He says, let me send you a little something up on behalf of the hotel Aww. just to settle you in for the evening. And I said, oh, that's really kind of you. Thank you. So takes the cases up, goes to the room, and it was lovely. We changed the room configuration from a king room to two queen beds. Mm -hmm. We had a balcony. It was a recently refurbished room. It was lovely. There was a nice yeah. big closet with a safe and some drawers, a beverage making area, a huge TV, a fridge, walk-in shower, really nicely done. There was a wooden floor, mm -hmm. um, not a proper wooden floor, but like a good laminate. Yeah. And the room was impeccably clean. It was lovely. Cool. The The only downsides I'd say is because I was there for nine nights, there wasn't a lot of place to put my clothes mm. because it's a convention hotel where yeah. people are there for one or two nights. Right, okay. But And I'd say the room possibly could have done with a bit brighter lighting mm -hmm. and the mirror was put in the most inconvenient place ever because you couldn't see it. Okay, that's not very helpful, it's a mirror. But apart from that, it was amazing. And the bed, oh my Lord, it had a uh, mattress topper on it. Mm. You put your head on that pillow and that was it. You was out for the night. It was that comfy. <laughs> so anyway, we got unpacked and the door went. So I went to the door, woman with a gift bag, not mm. a tray, a gift bag. And, right. Oh, thank you, room service. Inside, a bottle of rosé wine. Yeah. And two platters of like dippy in -y appetizer foods. Wow. One of them was a platter of mozzarella, different types of tomato, and a pesto drizzle Ooh. with, um, I think it had vegetable crudite on the side. And mm. then the other one would have been just up your street toasted pita bread and two types of hummus. Lovely. <laughs> So that was like, oh my word, that was so good of them to send that. So very sweet, yeah. I tucked into that and uh, got herself off to Sleepy Land because it was a big day next day. The day. The day where we went to the park and we was at the entrance for five to seven. Oh my goodness! I got my annual pass, got all sorted. Yeah. And we couldn't get into Disney California Adventure because that didn't open up for non-hotel guests to late so we went in disneyland and there mm -hmm. really wasn't much open but we pottered around got a coffee took some pictures went over to dca to get a candy cane voucher okay and we yeah there at 801 yeah and the, the lady said oh i'm really sorry i've just given out the last one. Oh no they'd literally all gone oh and i said oh i'm really oh it's, it was the first day i could get one and out of nowhere, this guy appeared with his, his partner and he said, oh, I've just heard what you've been saying. We got a voucher each. Would you like Would you like one of ours? Because we don't really need to. And could we do this? I was like, oh. Aw. So I gave him a bag of candy because I had some English chocolate and things with me to give out, you know, to people who made magic. So I thought, oh, here you go. So yeah. I got my candy cane. Cool. 
Then we had our breakfast at the Carnation Cafe with my Mickey Waffles. Nice, yes. I had Mickey Waffles on Christmas Day. I just thought I'd point that out as well. <gasps> you did, didn't you, lovely? Cause I did. It, your little tradition. Yeah. We also then did our Christmas tour, and I will come back to the Christmas tour and talk about it at a later date. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit more through some of the food options that we've eaten in a bit more detail later on. We had dinner at Cafe Orleans and we had an experience of the castle lighting, the gingerbread scented snow, although it didn't really smell of gingerbread this year, um, and then fireworks and all of that. Next day we went over to California Adventure and I went to the dessert party. I'll come back to that at another time. Mm -hmm. Then it was the Saturday and I did that really, really exclusive Universal Studios VVIP tour. Oh. I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> um, met up with my friend James from Creepy Kingdom and we did a very special event at the Queen Mary and I will pop back to that. So the rest of the time was sort of like Disney pottering around. On the Sunday, I'd mentioned to one or two people, hi guys, I'm going to be in the park. Do you want to meet up? I'll be at Tongaro Terrace. And a mm -hmm. fair few people came out to say hello, Aww, cool. which was lovely. It was really nice. And then the next big highlight, really, was going for tea at Steakhouse 55. Ooh. So I think I'm going to save that one as well for another time, and we'll go into a little bit of detail about that. Right. But on my very last day, I mm -hmm. was literally leaving the park and I bumped into a cast member of Royalty Standards. This is a cast member that so many people try and hunt down on their trips. And I just saw him by coincidence. I just met Mickey. I just, not, not Mickey, I met Minnie in Town Square. And I just thought, oh, I'll just plod over to the left, over to uh, Moments in History with Mr Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And there stood Maynard Smith. Oh, wow. And for those of you in the know, know that Maynard is a much-loved cast member. And if you've ever met him, you will understand why he's so loved. So mm -hmm. he did a little tour of the uh, area with me. And I Aww. thought, how great to share it. I know our Patreons have already had the video of this. I've shared it with them already. Mm -hmm. In a few moments, I will share on the audio with everybody else. He's worked at Disneyland since 1993. You're out. He has a Facebook group dedicated to him with over 3,600 <laughs> members called Fans of Maynard, the amazing cast member. <laughs> In the past, people have, an, have arranged an appreciation day and week for him. Oh, wow. So where can you find him? Well, his best place to ch catch him is the Enchanted Tiki Room. Okay. He's also over at the Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. I found him over at Mr Lincoln, though. Right. In his time with the Disney Company, he's been a skipper on the Jungle Cruise. Right. He's worked over at the, jungle, at the Country Bear Jamboree when it was there and on the Astro Orbiter. I was once sat in Enchanted Tiki Room with my good friend Stephen Clamasco on a past Christmas trip and Maynard came in and did his Tiki Spiel greeting. And I think I've shared that on the show before in the past. And mm. it was hysterical. It was so funny. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to share this little video of Maynard taking me around and sort of introducing me to some of the characters and things of note in Disneyland. So cool. let's pop that on now. Those of you who are perhaps from England, as the photographer here has indicated she, she is, a little education for you over there, over the pond. <laughs> okay, so if you come to the place like this, you may find uh, Aladdin with a big white turban, you know, and a twisted up little gold shoes. He, <clears throat> that guy, he sold me this carpet, and I'll show you. Uh, well, it's supposed to fly, right? I said, how does it fly? I said, say giddy up, okay? Giddy up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't do anything. He's laughing at me, counting my money. So, 
Of course, she needs to, no, I don't know, yeah, go to prison maybe, and then, then Jasmine, of course, she'll be free to. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, for somebody like uh, dressed up nice like me to, well, to comfort her in her hour of distress. Uh, anyway, just an idea, and then of course I have to build a, a cage for the, her tiger, that guy. <laughs> anyway, and over here we have something, that, I don't know if you in England experience this, but... Uh, Invisible babies. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lots of invisible babies. <laughs> I don't know if it has to do with what we eat here. Uh -huh. Back of the cereal. Food. Oh yeah, back of the cereal box might indicate something. Yeah, I'm kind of genetic. <laughs> invisible. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, here we have giant ducks too. You see? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and our dogs are gigantic too. But they're friendly. Uh, see, it's not biting. No biting. No teeth. See, <laughs> mouth is no teeth. Just tongue to lick and make a mess. Okay, okay. this way. <laughs> Here on display we have uh, petrified peanuts. <laughs> and here is one of our fish tanks. Okay, we got the fish tank here. We have different fish tanks, but for some reason they're storing things in them that I'm not quite understanding. Maybe they should be in a garage or something, but we were thinking maybe filling it with water and having fish for the kids. Kids love fish. <laughs> okay, unless it's to eat them and sometimes they don't want to eat them. I don't know why. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't know. Okay. So anyway, so you can imagine lots of fish in here, fantastic, and then over here this big fish tank. Uh, that will be for uh, seals, and we sell uh, little anchovies for them to to buy and to. <laughs> so I must be scurrying along, though. I Thank you. To, uh, Lovely to see you. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could show you more. Like we have some uh, petrified elves on the other side. There, you might see. Uh, I'll tell you where. I mean, you just go around the corner, and the big shelf. Uh, they're about this tall. <laughs> Yeah, it's from the orange field when we first got it. You see, magic. Anyway, uh, we gotta go. Whoop they do, and continue your hula dancing in England. It's a perfect training for future astronauts. <laughs> Bye. So there you go, Jen. What do you think to a little bit of Maynard? He's lovely, isn't he? That's what I'm talking about when we mentioned about the self-service kiosks. Yeah. It's the cast members and the friends and the family that you share your time with in this magical place that make it such a magical place. Yeah, and how many times... We've said this time and time and time again, haven't we? You know, engage with people. You'd be surprised what you get out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it was such a joy to spend that little time with him. I gave him a little bag of UK candy as well. <laughs> and, you know, it was so sweet. It was yeah. really good fun. And just after leaving Maynard and walking away, I had two bags of candy left and I just bumped into two random people. I said, forgive me if this may sound strange, but I like <laughs> to do random acts of kindness. And I'm going home today and literally my luggage is full. I can't take these candy bags. Would you like them? So Aww. That was my last moment in Disneyland. But guys, if you have any stories of meeting Maynard and you'd like to share your pictures or stories or if you've got video why not do that on our podcast page mm. for this show show 295 if you're a member of our Disney podcast family share it with the family we'd love to see it because Definitely. everyone's experience with him is different because the great thing about Maynard is he is improvising the whole time mm. And we absolutely adore him. Yeah. So sweetie. that's that. So basically, that's this week's show. Wow. I know. And we've just whizzed through the content. Next week, we're going to be talking about the Steakhouse 55 tea experience and one or two other highlights. Maybe looking at a little bit more of the news. Maybe answering some of your questions. Mm hmm. We do have coming up on the show as well an amazing chat with Seth Kaberski, all about his role in the unofficial guides, particularly Universal. So if you have any questions that you'd like us to pose to him, please get in touch with us, info at disneydreamgirls.com. You can tweet us at Disdreamgirls. Follow along on Instagram, 
at Dis Dream Girls, or you can get in touch with one of our Facebook groups, Disney Dream Girls, or the Disney Dream Girls podcast family. If you are wanting access to more Disney Dream Girls content, our Patreons have access to Facebook Lives, Disney videos and pictures and extra shows just for them as a way of thanking them for supporting the show financially. So if you want to find out more, go on over to patreon.com forward slash Disney Dream Girls and you will find everything you need over there to find out whether you'd like access to over 107 different unique posts. But until next time, it's a goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. This podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast Network.